everybody, welcome back to Kelly Barlow Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by, welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video, depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links in the description box below. What have I got going on for you for today? Oh my word, today's DIY I am so stinking excited about because the outcome turned out amazing. It's been a while since I've been this excited about a DIY that I've created, but this one just honestly superseded what I had in my head and the outcome turned out amazing. And the best part is it is so budget friendly, I can hardly stand it. And a lot of the stuff that I'm using, you can get from the Dollar Tree. On Pinterest over the last few months, I have been seeing these stove top, range top covers. They've been trending on Pinterest, they're super popular, but when you click on them, it doesn't show you how to make it. It just kind of sends you to an Etsy store where you're gonna pay at the least that I found is $95 on up to almost 200. And as they are absolutely gorgeous and very handcrafted, I'm thinking to myself, I'm not gonna pay 95 to $200 for something that I can DIY. And as soon as I saw these and I saw the price, I knew that I could instantly do it for about $20 using the majority of the items that I'm gonna need to make this from the Dollar Tree. And so today I am gonna be making a stove top, range top cover using these wall decor plaques that Dollar Tree's carrying right now for Easter. Now, if you're watching this outside of Easter, please don't be discouraged thinking that you can't do this DIY because Easter is over and they don't have these plaques any longer because nine times out of 10, Dollar Tree has wall decor plaques in this shape year round. And it could be for summer, it could be for any holiday. Valentine's Day, they had one with a cute little aluminum heart on it. You just gotta keep your eye open for it and you're gonna find them. And since it just happens to be Easter and these are the plaques that are out, this is what I'm using. I am feeling super inspired to do this stovetop range top cover because it's something that once I saw it, I really was like, I want that. I want one of those. I love the look of that. Not only does it cover up the top of your stove in the range, but it also serves as a decor piece in your kitchen and it really gives it that rustic feel. And so I am excited to show you how I do this stovetop range cover using the majority of the items that it takes to make this from the Dollar Tree. Now I will tell you that there are some alternatives and as we go along with this DIY, I will share them with you. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get to creating this stovetop range cover using Dollar Tree items. I am so stinking excited. Alrighty, so getting started, to cover my range, I needed seven of these plaques. Now there is not a universal size, for stovetop ranges, so you may not need seven. I do suggest measuring out the width of your range and going from there. You may only need four or five. Then I'm gonna go ahead and remove the cute little embellishments on each of these plaques, the paws, the bow, and of course we're gonna remove the hanger. For the areas where the embellishments were, I'm gonna take a real fine sandpaper. You don't wanna use anything real rough like this one because when you sand it, it's gonna make it worse. And so the idea is just to really smooth out the paper in the edges so when we paint it, it doesn't show. And so just by using a fine grade sandpaper, you can do that and it only takes a couple minutes and I'm gonna do this again to all seven of these plaques. To attach all seven of these plaques together, I'm gonna to flip them over and on the back side, Setting them side by side, I'm gonna use some of these jumbo popsicle sticks and some of Aileen's tacky glue. Really, your glue choice is all your preference. I've seen great results with this Aileen's glue. I really like it. If you wanna use a wood glue, you can use a wood glue. If you wanna use E6000, you can do that. Just keep in mind that E6000 takes a while to dry. It has to cure, so you're gonna be waiting a few hours to wear the Aileen's tacky glue within an hour. 
I should be able to move this piece. And so I'm gonna place all of these popsicle sticks on the seams where each of the plaques meet and I'm gonna be real generous with the amount of glue that I use. When placing these popsicle sticks, you really wanna make sure and not do it to the edge or edges of the plaque. You wanna stay about an inch away because there's going to be a base to this. And so you want this to be able to set evenly down. And so you can see here at the top where I stayed about an inch from the top edges on both ends. To really help keep these plaques together, I'm gonna use just a bit of blue painter's tape just to really keep them good and close. I also decided to add some magazines just to give it a bit of weight on top of the popsicle sticks just to get them really good and adhered to the plaques. I did want to show you that if you needed to cut one of these plaques because you have a funky size range, I had to cut mine using these three lines as a guide. It actually worked out perfect and was the perfect size just cutting off one of these sections. If you tape a ruler to your plaque and you use the ruler as a guide and score it several times with a razor, you'll be able to cut through this pretty quickly. I was able to cut through it in just about four or five minutes. If you don't have a ruler that's long enough, you will have to move your ruler down like I did and just to continue scoring for the second half of the plaque, the bottom half of it. Once you've got it pretty well scored through, if you take and just kind of fold the plaque backwards, you'll see that it will break through. But I didn't want it to break and rip, and so as I was folding and bending it backwards, I did take my razor on the back side and just kind of run it along that folded edge and it cut through perfectly. I'm gonna run a piece of sandpaper over this just to sand it down and to smooth it out just a bit. Now, some of you may be asking, why not just use plywood instead of gluing seven of these plaques together? Well, there are a couple reasons why I went with this plaque. One being plywood is going to add weight to this, and so it's gonna make it a heavier piece to lift up. And two, I like to give subscribers an alternative to using wood. If you wanna use plywood, you totally can. Another reason why I went with the plaques was because by gluing these plaques together side by side, it's going to give the look and the feel of wood panels. Because of where the two plaques meet, there's gonna be a seam here, and when you paint it and you sand it, you're gonna get that natural seam that comes out. To where if you use plywood, you're gonna have to paint it on, and there are people who are gonna say, I'm not artistically inclined. If I paint this, it's gonna look like funky lines and it's not gonna look like that. And so by using these plaques, you are giving the illusion of wood panels, which is very rustic and farmhouse. You can see that I am easily able to flip this over. It is a very sturdy piece. The popsicle sticks I'm happy with. If you're worried about it not being sturdy enough, you could always reinforce it with a bit of cardboard if you have some extra cardboard lying around. For the top of this cover, I wanted to add an elevated decorative piece to each side. And so to do that, I'm gonna be using these one by four pieces of wood. I had these left over from a DIY that I'm gonna be bringing to you here real soon. Really, going the route of the wood is so much cheaper than really doing it any other way. Going to your local hardware store, you're gonna pay maybe $3 for a six foot piece of this, and you're not even gonna use it all in this DIY. You're gonna have some left over, and the hardware store will give you a couple cuts for free. So you might as well take advantage of that, save yourself some money. If you don't wanna to go to the hardware store, you can always use these wood slats that you can get at Walmart. This is by Create and Go, six come in a pack. You're gonna need two packs. I paid $2.97 a pack for these, so you're gonna end up paying $6 for two packs, which is way more than you would pay if you bought the wood itself. Another alternative would be to use some of Dollar Tree's Jenga blocks and glue a couple of rows together. There again, you're probably gonna need like five or six boxes, so you're still gonna spend more money. So your best bet is just to go to your local hardware store and have them cut you some wood and you're gonna spend $3. To glue these on, I will be using some of Dollar Tree's wood glue. This is by Crafter Square. If you have a wood glue that you prefer better than this, 
go for it. I've seen great results with this glue, so that's what I'm gonna be using. For the base of my cover, I am using Jenga blocks and I needed seven boxes to do this. And so this is kind of the frame that's going to hold the top up. I've got taller grates on my range and so I needed to make these high enough that the plaques wouldn't touch it. And so to do that, I glued together using Aileen's glue a stack of four, a set of four blocks. And I did 62 of these, I believe, which is going to make this entire frame. Once I glued the four sets together side by side, I rotated them and I glued them together side by side with, I guess the blocks now horizontal instead of vertical, if that makes any sense. And I had to do two sets of 20, which would be a row of 20. And that was for the top and the back. And for the sides, I did two sets of 12. And again, using the Aileen's glue, this worked really well. I suggest kind of gluing these together in pieces so that way you can kind of maneuver the blocks and push them together easily. Now for the base of this cover, I do suggest that when doing this, there are no universal sizes. I can't tell you what size you're gonna need or how many blocks you're gonna need for your stove because I did mine based on my range. And so I think the best thing to do when sizing it is just to play with your blocks, stand them up, lay them on their sides and go across just to see how many blocks you're gonna need. And you really wanna try and make it a size so you don't need to cut those blocks. And that was what I did with mine, that back row of blocks up against the backsplash. It's actually about an inch and a half to two inches away from the backsplash. But when I put the top on, the plaques on, the plaques themselves are actually gonna be touching the backsplash. And so by doing it this way, I saved myself from having to cut any blocks. I do suggest gluing your frame together in place around the range itself. It's gonna make it a lot easier. Once you've got your frame glued together, before it dries, you're gonna place the top on this. And so to do that, I'm gonna place some glue along the top edge of all of the Jenga blocks. Then I'm just gonna gently place the plaques right on top. And so by doing it while it's wet, it's gonna give you the capability of kind of maneuvering things around for a couple minutes to get things straight in place, lined up with each other, and I think it's just gonna work out better. You're gonna see that my plaques are painted because I had gotten a little excited ahead of time. You don't need to paint them. I kind of jumped the gun. I figured since I gotta wait for this piece to dry, now would be a good time to fill in these holes that the plaques originally had that I forgot about until I started painting it. And then I thought, oh wow, I needed to fill these in. And so that's why I didn't show that step. So since this piece needs to dry, I'm gonna use some Dollar Tree spackling and I'm gonna fill in the holes with this. And by the time the frame and the top are dry, these should be dry and ready to smooth out. What's great about working with spackling is once it's dry, if you just take a wet sponge, you can easily wipe over the spackling and the excess spackling will come right off and you've got a nice smooth surface and your holes are filled in. Now on these wood pieces that are on each side of the cover, I measured in and I found the center point. Then using this Black & Decker drill, this is such a handy tool that I invested in. I think I spent maybe $20 on it at Walmart and I use it all the time. It was well worth the investment because it really opens up what I can do craft-wise, DIYing. I'm gonna drill a hole on each of these panels. And I'm doing this because this is where I'm gonna place the knobs. I'm placing knobs that I can actually screw into this because although it isn't a super heavy piece, it is a bit heavier. I wanna be able to lift this up off my range without the knobs popping off. Now it is time to finally paint this piece and get these edges done. So the paint that I will be using is this Waverly chalk paint in the color of ink. And this is going to be the base coat of this cover because when I go to distress this and I sand this down, I wanna be able to sand it down to the black and have the black come through the top coat. And so I'm gonna give this a second coat. I had really only put one coat on this 
And so you might need two coats because we are covering up the original design on the plaques and you can still kind of see through that first coat. And so yeah, you're gonna wanna give this two good coats of a black base paint if you're going with that farmhouse theme and you think you're gonna wanna distress this. For the top coat of this cover, I'm gonna go with Waverly's Cashew. This color is gorgeous. It's a bit darker than the ivory. It's got some beige in it. And so I feel like it's gonna go a lot better with my kitchen and the backsplash. I went ahead and just poured it on the piece itself because my foam applicator isn't gonna fit in the bottle. And I feel like it's just gonna help move the project along quicker. But when you do do this, you wanna move quickly so your paint doesn't start to dry and it doesn't leave impressions on the piece that you're doing. I'm gonna give this cover probably two coats of this paint. You don't need to worry about perfection when you're putting this top coat on. And what I mean by that is you don't need to worry if some of the black is showing through because we are going to be sanding this and distressing it. I will also be using some of Waverly's Hazelnut. Again, this is another color that is in the backsplash of my kitchen. That's why I'm using it. Today, I am using a different technique to distressing a piece. Rather than doing coat after coat after coat of three different colors of paint, I'm gonna show you a different technique, an easier technique to distressing using multiple colors. Sanding can be a bit tiring, it can be a bit of work, and it can take a while. And so sometimes if you use this technique, it kind of moves the distressing process along a bit quicker, a bit easier, and you still get the same aged, distressed look that you would have gotten had you done two coats of black, two coats of hazelnut, and then two coats of ivory. That is now six coats of paint that you need to sand through to get down to the black, or four coats, really, to get down to the black. And that is gonna take a lot of sanding and make a mess. And so if you do what I'm doing, it's gonna make it easy and it's gonna give the illusion that this hazelnut was under the cashew, above the black paint, it's gonna look really cool. So as you see, I'm just gonna kinda put this color in different places throughout the top. Now, stick with me on this. I know it's gonna kinda look funky for a minute, but I promise you that when we go to sand this, it's gonna look amazing. And like I said, it's not gonna take as much work. I'm happy with the amount of hazelnut that I've got on here. So now I'm gonna go back in with the black because again, to get to the black, we're gonna have to sand through four layers of paint, and I don't wanna have to do that. There are gonna be some areas on the cashew that I sand through to get to the black, but that's only two coats if you're following me with what I mean. And if, if you've sanded before, you know that sanding through this amount of paint can be hideous. It can really take a lot of time. Your arm's gonna get tired, and frankly, it just stinks. And so I like this technique a lot because you can really achieve that same look. For the center of this cover, I wanted to add a little something. And so I'm gonna be using one of these stencils from this Folk Art Stencil Pack. There's 32 stencils in this pack, which is amazing. You can find this at Walmart for $9.97. This is something that I've had in my stash that I like to show you, you can use as an alternative. And because these are reusable, you're gonna get more for your money. If you don't wanna buy a stencil and you have a Cricut, you're gonna get creative on your Cricut and you're gonna make your own stencil. If you don't wanna make a stencil and you don't wanna buy one, you're gonna use one of these awesome wall decor decals that the Dollar Tree carries. If I'm being completely honest, I was kinda of torn between these two. I really like these two. These are two that I have in my stash. In the end, I ended up going with this blessed stencil. To add the black paint to the stencil, I like to use a sponge dabber instead of a brush. You're not gonna get the same outcome using a brush as you would with a dabber because you're not gonna be patting it down. You're gonna wanna brush it on. The patting down of the paint is actually what helps so there's no bleedage under the stencil. If you happen to get some on this project, if I happen to get some on this project, I'm not really worried about it because like I like to say, the more imperfect something is, the more perfect it is when you're making a farmhouse decor piece like this. 
Once you give your paint a few minutes to dry, you are good to peel your stencil off. And there we have a quick, easy little something in the middle of our cover. I am loving this. But the one thing I don't like is those spaces in the letters that you get when using a stencil. So I'm just gonna take my paintbrush and fill in those empty spaces a bit. Once all the paint is good and dry, we are now ready to start sanding. And I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to sand this and really soften up those edges, really give this that distressed look, make some of these parts that I painted onto this not so abstract and show you how this technique really is going to save you time. It's gonna save your hand and your arm muscles from sanding for hours. I am going to go over the stencil itself because I don't want it to look stark and new. I want it to look aged and old. And so I'm just going to kind of show you this area here, how by adding the other colors of paint to the top, like I did and adding some of the black, it really does make sanding this a bit easy. You just really want to make sure that the edges of the areas where you added the paint, that there's no sharp lines that you really just soften up those edges when sanding. I'm not going to show you the top of this yet because I really want you to see it at the end and if you saw the thumbnail then you know that it really looked amazing but you just really want to sand it to distress it to your liking so if you like a lot of distressing you're going to keep going with it. Once I flip this over I did want to show you that along the Jenga blocks, the framing of this, I did go ahead and add some popsicle sticks with some hot glue just to reinforce and really hold those blocks together. The knobs that I'll be using today are these knobs by Mainstays. These are a wood knob. I bought a 10 pack. I think I spent about $6.87 on the 10 pack, but that's because I have other DIYs that I'm gonna be bringing to you using these. You can buy these individually for 98 cents a piece. I didn't paint these knobs before I put them on because I really wasn't sure if these were the knobs that I was gonna use. I was kind of bouncing between these knobs and a set of 12 knobs that I had found at Kirkland's for $12.99. They were an antique knob. Once I put them near up to, I guess, this cover, I realized that they were just too fancy for this and that it would be best just to go with the wood knobs and just give them a nice coat of the black chalk paint. Oh my word, would you look at this before and after. This adds so much to this area in my kitchen. It really gives it that rustic farmhouse feel. I love not having to look at my range anymore. I didn't think that I was gonna love it as much as I do, but I am obsessed with this piece. This was such a budget-friendly piece. It cost me under $20 to make. The work that I put into it was well worth it. It really only took me a full day to do this. You can see that by using the distressing technique that I use that it still looks like there are three layers of paint that have been aged and distressed off and I couldn't be happier with this outcome. Well, everybody, that's all I have for you for today for my DIY Dollar Tree range stovetop cover. I love this piece. This is a piece that I am so excited to have in my kitchen. I just love it and I just want to make one for everyone now because it was so budget friendly and it is just such a fun piece to have. I hope you all enjoyed today's DIY. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to, you guessed it, 5,000 likes because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. And bye for now, everybody.